This tutorial will illustrate the CSI bridge design capabilities for steel girders. For this example, we will design a two-span, two-lane bridge consisting of steel girders with a concrete deck. Design is an iterative process and starts with the analysis followed by the design check and then the optimization. This cycle repeats until a satisfactory design is reached. We will create our model using the quick bridge template. Selecting the steel girder option, we will set our spans to be 60 feet or 720 inches and 960 inches or 80 feet. Moving to the layout tab, we see that a single layout line has been defined. This line goes from 0 to 1680 which is 720 plus 960. The program has also created two lanes. Moving to the components tab, the program has generated materials for concrete and steel. CSI Bridge has also created a steel girder section which we will rename steel girder to make it easier to identify. Note that the girder is 48 inches deep with flanges that are 15 inches wide and 2 inches thick. It has also generated a concrete section for the bent, which we will name bent. In the superstructure panel, a single bridge deck has been generated. The deck has two interior girders, or four girders total, and is 36 feet wide. The slab is 12 inches thick, and the steel girder section is used for the girders. In the superstructure panel, we will add a diaphragm definition. We will select the single beam option and use the same steel girder section. In the substructure panel, a bearing, an abutment, and a bent have been defined. On the Loads tab, Vehicles, and a vehicle class have been defined. Under load patterns, we see that the only pattern created is for the dead load. Moving on to the bridge tab, we can review the bridge object that CSI Bridge has defined. The bridge object is where components are assigned and we see that the location of the abutments and bent have been set using the reference line. To the model, we are going to assign the diaphragm that we previously defined. 
we will assign diaphragms to both spans at 240 inches on center. The bridge object plan shows that the diaphragms have been added. With the bridge object complete, we will update the linked model. We are now just about ready to run the analysis. Switching to the Analysis tab, we see that three load cases have been defined. The Move case applies live loads to our two lanes. We will now run the analysis. With the analysis complete, we will move on to the Design Rating tab. A check of the load combinations shows that no combos have yet been defined. We will add combos by using the defaults under the Bridge Design option. Combos have now been generated. In the Superstructure Design panel, a check of the code preferences shows that ASHTO 2007 is selected, which we will use. Next, we will define a design request, which controls how the design will be performed. We click the Add New Request button and see that the design will be performed for the entire bridge. It is under the Design Request parameters that we set the combos to be used for our demand sets. The MDNC combo is the combo that represents the factored permanent load applied before the concrete deck is hardened, the so-called non-composite load. This combo might include loads from the girders, forms, and the deck and haunches. The MDC combo represents the remainder of the factor load applied to the composite section, such as the wearing surface, and the live loads. Since investigating the many load combination options to determine the correct loading can take significant time and is not the focus of this tutorial, we will skip this step and simply use the initial settings. Please see the program documentation for more information on setting up the design requests. For live load distribution, we will select the option to use the girder forces directly from the analysis. We are now ready to run the design. The bridge object responses are now displayed for the design request we defined. We start by looking at the positive moment demand capacity ratios for each of the four girders. Make note of the demand capacity ratio value shown in the top left corner of the graph. None of the positive moment demands exceed the capacities. Next, we will review the negative moment ratios.
Here, the interior girders have demand capacity ratios that exceed 1, so we will need to revise these sections in order to reduce this ratio. Also note that there is negative moment at the ends of the bridge, which means that the bearings are restrained. This is probably not the desired behavior unless the girders are integral with the abutments. This occurred in this model because only one bearing was defined and it was used at both the bent and the abutments. We are now ready to optimize. On this form, the top panel shows the girder properties, while the other two panels show results. Remember that we are interested in the negative moment demand capacity ratio, so we will switch the middle display to these values. We set the results category to unitless, and then check the negative flexure option and uncheck the positive flexure. Going up to the girder drop-down list, we select interior girder 1. Note that the graph now gives a ratio greater than 1 at the bent support. To reduce this demand capacity ratio, we are going to increase the thickness of the top flange. We do this by clicking on the Modify Section button. On this form, we can modify the top flange, the web, and the bottom flange for any girder. Selecting Interior Girder 1, and starting with Span 1, we will change the top flange from 2 inches thick to 3 inches. Clicking the Update Plot button shows a slightly thicker flange. We repeat the process for Span 2. Click on Interior Girder 2 and repeat. With the sections modified, the next step is to recalculate the resistance. Note that the middle graph now shows both a plot for the Analyze section, which was our original result, and a second plot for Design, which represents the Modified section. A check of the design plot shows that the demand capacity ratio is now below 1, which was the goal. However, the forces used in this check were based on the analysis using the original section, labeled as, as analyzed in the top panel. We need to update the model with the modified sections. This is done by clicking on the OK button. Here we have three options, to modify the existing model, to save our changes to a new model, or to exit the optimization without making any changes. We will select the Unlock option and update our current model, although the safest option is to save the changes to a new model. Optimization is complete, and we should now rerun the analysis so that forces can be determined based on the revised girder sections.
with the analysis complete, we can again run the design. From the previous design, we know that it is only the negative moment ratios that exceeded capacity, so we will display the negative flexural values. Note that for the interior girders, which previously exceeded 1, their demand capacity ratios now fall below 1 with these revised girders, and thus we will accept this as a valid design. If the design did not satisfy the demand capacity ratio requirements, we would return to optimization and modify the girder sections once more. Note that for the interior girders, the analyzed top flanges are now shown as 15 by 3 and not the 15 by 2 that we started with. For a more detailed look at the design results, we can display tables for the girders as analyzed and tables for the girders as designed. Here, for each station, along each girder, the governing equation is listed. along with all the values that are used for calculating the demand capacity ratio. Although we only concerned ourselves with modifying the flanges in this example, the optimization form also provides the ability to add stiffeners to the web. In this case, Stiffeners are already shown where we place the diaphragms, which divides the girders up into 240 inch long panels. This concludes this tutorial on the design of steel girder bridges.